All right. Um, hope everyone's doing well tonight. This is Rodney. Can, can if someone, if you have your camera on, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Well, welcome everybody to um, and now for something completely robotic, Rodney's AI adventure. And let me, I'll just ask you guys, is that a very good name for a um, program? What do you, what do you think of that? Was that pretty clever or, or maybe it could have been better? It was, it works. It definitely works and it tells what it is. I mean, more you don't really want. Well, well, thanks, Verita. So one of the things I did for the program we're going to do tonight about artificial intelligence is I used as much artificial intelligence as I could to create this. And, you know, to me, the, the title, I think it's it's a good example of artificial intelligence. The, the title, and now for something completely robotic, Rodney's AI adventure, is, is kind of, I don't know, amusing, but probably... Probably I could have done better. And I think that's a good example of artificial intelligence. It's a way of doing things um, and maybe a jumping off point for maybe some things we can do better. Um, it created this logo for my Rodney SF Tours. Again, I, I kind of like it. It's cool. It looks kind of like um, Edward Munch meets um, cable cars in the city of San Francisco, perhaps. Uh, and then I, I, we're going to talk about the world of artificial intelligence, and I've created, using AI, two images, which I use the title World of Artificial Intelligence. I just threw that at uh, an artificial intelligence engine, and this is one from Adobe Firefly, and this is a different one from the Microsoft image generator. Again, you can look at that and think, um, I don't know, is that cool or what? By the way, let me ask you guys, um, who, which do you like better, this one or this one? Put it in, maybe in chat. I should have created a poll for this, but I didn't. Um, or you can just tell me. I like them both, but number two is sort of, the woman is looking at me. It's sort of, wow. Well, here's this. Here's the. Here's what I can do. I can take that image <laughs> and make it my background Ooh. for this Zoom program. Give me a second here, and then maybe we'll switch later on and see which one you like better. But you know, I like having fun. With, it, 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 to me, this is all about having fun, and we'll talk a bit about that. And th thanks for speaking up, Marina. I'm, you know, we aren't, I'm not muting people like I do for a lot of my other programs. Um, definitely want to hear from you guys during this thing. I have, you know, I got some presentations. By the way, I have to tell you guys, I have serious cred when it comes to AI because I went to AI high school. <laughs> Alexis I. DuPont High School in Wilmington, Delaware, about a mile from the Biden home, by the way. And um, we called it AI. I asked the image generator what an AI high school would look like, and this is one example of. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of like these. This is what uh this is totally what our classrooms looked like at AI Dupont. <laughs> was, you know, kind of a typical day. Um, although actually, I'll show you for for real. This was um uh, in nineteen, I think seventy seventy eight. We got a PDP 11 micro, like what do you call it? Not a microcomputer, a mini computer from uh, DEC. And this was my first time ever using computers. So I mm -hmm. did actually do computer stuff in, in high school. Um, and you can see it didn't even have like a cathode ray tube monitor. You couldn't, you, you would get printouts from this typewriter when you put stuff in there. Um, and then this is, we we had a great high school marching band. And then this is an AI generated high school marching band. So it would be cool if AI DuPont actually did more AI stuff. Um, but let's, let's get, let's cut to the chase. So what are we going to talk about tonight? Um, I want to talk to you guys about getting access to some of these AI tools. I, I think the best way to learn this stuff is to play with it. I think that's, that's what I've been doing. That's what I encourage you to do. Um, explore ways we can use it. 
Um, I want this to be interactive, so I do want to um, hear from you guys about stuff. And I want to, I want this to be fun. This is not like eating your vegetables. This is. <laughs> I like vegetables. Don't get me wrong, but I like vegetables too, Rodney. <laughs> Good, Nick. Yeah, I just, in fact, you and I just had some vegetables not long ago. Um, and so beyond the scope of this program, I, is, I'm not going to go into a lot about how the AI works. And if I'm disappointing some of you, I, I apologize, but there's a lot of good articles about that. So I'm not planning to go into that. I'm not going to show you the features that require paid access. And, I, and, and I'm not really planning to talk about dystopic fears which may be completely le legitimate, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that. All right. And this is, this is going to tell you everything you need to about, know about this presentation. When I asked the question, what is artificial intelligence? I'm going to give you guys a very simple definition. And some of you might, want, might see this and just say, okay, um, if this is how it's going to be, I'm just going to log off. But let's see what you guys think of this. To me, artificial intelligence is nothing more than a new tool. We've, you know, throughout human history, we've come up with different tools. Um, tools have changed how we do things. And often when we have a new tool, we have to learn how to use it. Um, there will be fears about it being misused. You know, like I'm sure when the hammer came out, people thought well, this, this is going to be great for like, you know, you know, put driving and nails to things, but, um, you know, a lot of fingers are going to get hurt with this thing. Is it really worth it? <laughs> um, but, you know, the hammer stuck around. You can look at other inventions in, um, you know, like social media is a very recent one where we, we do have a, a, you know, you can have a good debate about what the good and the bad of social media is. But I want us just to think of this as a new tool that we should be playing with so we can figure out how, it, it can be useful for us, and you might even reach the conclusion, oh, it's not useful for me, and that's fine, too. Um, and then we're going to talk about several um, AI services. So ChatGPT, probably you've heard about that. Um, we're going we're gonna to use that because that's free, and that's um, kind of text-based. Um, then I have access to Bing, which you get if you have a Microsoft license, like if you have Word or the Office Suite. Um, but also I've tried Adobe Firefly. I want to thank Bennett, Bennett Burke recommended that to me um, this afternoon. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll take a look at that one too. And here are just some really simple instructions for getting on to these things. So for, for ChatGPT, um, and I think I'm going to email this to you, but it's pretty simple. You just go to the website and you're going to do a sign up process. It's not too complicated. You do need to give them your email address and you will pick a, a password. And I think you'll get an email message that you have to click on to confirm that it's really you. And they, for some reason, they want your birthday and your name. So you got to be willing to hand over that information to use chat GPT uh, in Personally, I think it's worth it, but you can decide that for yourself. Um, and here's a few things that we can do with ChatGPT. Uh, and so, I, I, you know, you guys saw the poll I sent out earlier today, and we're going to use the data in the poll that you guys provided uh, for some of this. So you can take just like available ingredients you have in your kitchen, and you can throw it into the engine, and the engine will tell you some recipes you could make with that. Do you want to make that recipe? Well, that, that'll be up to you, but it's, it's, you know, it's just kind of a cool little trick. Um, it can write stories. I've had a lot of fun with this. You can put in kind of like Mad Libs, like you put in some information um, and then it crafts a story around that. Uh, you can have it answer emails. Um, and I'll digress for just a second. One of the things somebody, I asked like things you would like to do with AI and someone said, I would like to use, like, what are some things that you would, you would like to be able to use this thing for? And someone said, um, to prevent Donald Trump from being elected president. And so I just actually put into ChatGPT, um, um, write a, a message I could send someone to persuade them to vote against Donald Trump. And it, it came up with a pretty good message, you know? So we, we, we can take a look at that. Um, outlines, you can create outlines for any kind of thing. Here's, here's something I did um, 
with ChatGPT. Uh, my my garage is kind of a kind of it could be, be less messy than it is, and I put in there what are what's a good way to organize a garage, and and it gave me all these categories of things in your garage and said you know you hear these categories and you should try to get these things all together, so it can be a good way to think of things like that. Um, you can get help with software tools. You can ask it about you know how do I do something with Microsoft Word or um, you know, another another tool. And it, it can give you pretty good, it's almost like using help, but a quicker way to get that. And it can actually write code for things. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get too far into the code, but you can have it write, maybe we will do an Excel function or something, because that's kind of fun to watch it do that. And I'm about to jump in and show you the thing for real. I'm not usually big on showing slides with a lot of words, but just one, one other thing to know about it is um, it can be useful for the same kind of searches you do in uh, Google. Um, you can try some of these things in. It's a human language interface. So you can really just ask it something like you would ask a person. Um, that's really one of its strengths. Uh, and it can generate, it generates new results um, instead of retrieving existing data. So if you were to, um, you know, if you were to go to Google and ask it about like, you know, how do I do something in Excel, it would probably find you the um, Excel help page. It would find a particular page where someone's already written that out, but it will instead use um, its algorithm to generate kind of new results that are tailored to what you've asked it. All right, um, let me stop and ask, does anybody with what I've said so far, before we um, jump into the tools, does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, um, it's it's a comment, and I'm not as uh, sanguine as you are about the uh, benefits of AI. I mean, you say it's, it's just a tool, but you know, tools have had society changing consequences. Technologies have had such consequences: the printing press, the, the uh, the, the telegraph, the steam engine, and people to varying degrees get hurt or killed. Um, and I, the question that comes to my mind is who's steering the development of these new technologies? And is it masses of people speaking with a single voice or is it only the, the deep pocket people? I mean, right now I'm concerned. You mentioned Trump, this is an election year. And so many people, including myself, is are in the grips of what is essentially an, an attention capturing machine. Yeah. So driven by those, algorithms. Those are that great questions. Me. Really yeah. good questions. I don't think I'm answering a lot of those questions today. Um, yeah. you, the skepticism and concern you have, I, I, you should definitely keep that. Like, I would definitely advise everyone to pay attention to this thing. When you play with it, you know, if there's, you know, you you should think about those things. I'm just my goal is really to get you using it because that's the best way to understand it. Does that make sense, Nick? Uh, I think it is good to use it and get familiar with it so that we have more of a voice in steering its use. Yeah. So that, that we agree on, and then um, yeah, I, I those are all really good questions. Again, other other questions. I'm going to stop sharing and I have to go, I'm going to go share my, let me get my browser going and we're going to get into um, chat GPT first. We're going to do the image generation stuff second, which is really, this image generation is really fun. All right, pay, pay, don't, don't pay too much attention to what you see out there. Um, but I'm, actually, I'm going to go. Let me go pull up this form that you guys filled out. Hopefully, I can find that. And um, thanks for filling out the form. So here it is. And let's look at the responses. First of all, it's just, so it's always fun to see where people are connecting from, even though that doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing. Uh, but we have a lot of people in the East Bay, which is where I happen to be. Um, but we have some folks from San Francisco. Um, we have, it seems like a, one or two people from the South Bay, which is, no, that's, that must be elsewhere in California. I was thinking, yeah, the South Bay, uh, Nick, those are the, those are, might be those very people that you want to get a hold of. 
And then um, someone elsewhere, someone outside of the US. That's really cool. All right. So you guys gave me um, a list of ingredients in your kitchens. And what I'm going to do is just copy and paste all of them. And we're going to go to the chat GPT engine. And I'm going to just, so this, this thing is like, basically you can type any kind of questionnaire. You could say, you could type something like, you know, who is um, Arnold Schwarzenegger? And then it would give you like, kind of like a brief history of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yikes. Yeah, not too, not too much, but we're going to, um, we're going to ask it to create a recipe. So create a recipe using the following ingredients. And it's just all this random stuff that you guys gave me. So it's kind of crazy, right? And I think I'll go and copy that whole thing out. It's going to be a lot of stuff. It's going to be, <laughs> but it's got a plan, you know? Ooh. And it and also like really talks it up, you know. So let me copy this into the um copy this into the chat. Oh, so that's too long. Oh, I didn't know that. That's I'm sorry. Wait, wait a second. So Rodney, this isn't a real recipe. I mean, it was put together on the fly. Look at the name of it: the Asian Fusion Chicken Stir Fry with Garlic Squash Beets and Romano Beans. I don't yeah. think we'll find that in Epicurious. <laughs> it could be just like a stupid AI trick or something, but um, oh, hold on a second. All right, so there's that. Let's see if I can get that into the chat. Still too long. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. I didn't know that. Um, okay, well, we'll just go through it a little bit. Okay, so um, yeah, Asian fusion chicken stir fry with garlic, squash, beets, and Romano beans. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. At the end of this whole thing, I'm going to um, copy all this crazy stuff out and put it on my website and send you that link so you can see this stuff. In case somebody somebody really should try to make this thing, you know? Let's um, each make a different one, and then we can have a party. I like it. Marinate the diced chicken breasts in a mixture of caramel syrup, soy sauce, and sriracha sauce for at least 30 minutes. I mean, you got to love that, right? <laughs> Um, so it's pretty inventive. And then here's the thing at the end, this recipe combines the savory flavors of chicken and vegetables with the sweetness of chocolate covered cherries in caramel syrup, along with a hint of spice from sriracha sauce, the garlic squash and beets add earthy notes, while the Romano beans provide a hearty texture. Enjoy this flavorful and nutritious disc dish with a unique blend of ingredients. So <laughs> it, it likes to put a very positive spin on things. Mm. All right, any questions on, on that? <laughs> and then yeah, John wants to know, one cup of chocolate covered cherries? Yeah, and I think the earlier versions of this recipe, it was actually having you remove the chocolate from the chocolate covered cherries, which I thought was kind of nuts, but <laughs> it's about that. Where are the chocolate covered cherries? All right, garnish with chocolate covered cherries for a sweet twist. All right, um, let's go back to our data set here. And we have, um, I had you guys give me the names of some famous people. And actually, maybe we'll just pick all of them. And then you guys gave me, I have, I have more famous people, but we kind of already have enough. Um, but you, you named a bunch of activities Wow. I think we should try to get all these guys playing pickleball personally. <laughs> so, so you put in, write a story um, about a pickleball game involving the following people. Copy all them in. Okay, and we'll, I'll, I'll go back to the top and we will read some of this. I don't know if we want to read all of it. We might. 
Oh, Bennett says, I have actually gotten a few reasonable rep recipes. It's pretty simple. You know, you, and it, it is like, I, we're doing some kind of crazy thing where we're throwing tons of stuff at it. But if you, you know, if you really wanted to come up with something with some things that really ought to be together in a recipe, you could get something, you know, Bennett's saying you could get something good out of it. And I have used it already to do that. All right. So our story is called The Pickleball Chronicles, A Clash of Legends. In the heart of a quaint suburban neighborhood nestled between towering oak trees and well-manicured lawns, there lay a bustling pickleball court. It was a sunny afternoon. The court buzzed with excitement as an unusual group of players gathered for a legendary pickleball match. Jerry Garcia, strumming his guitar between points, stood on one side of the court, his tie-dye headband, keeping his wild hair at bay. Across from him was the king himself, El Elvis Presley, gyrating his hips, and flashing his signature smile as he twirled his paddle. So it's going to, oh yeah, the game, this is, a, it gets better. The game attracted a diverse crowd, including Helen Keller, her keen sense of touch compensating for her lack of sight and hearing. In William Shakespeare, his eloquence evident even in the intensity of the match. Einstein, with his unruly hair and calculating gaze, observed the game from the sidelines, occasionally offering words of wisdom to the players. Okay, I think I'll stop, but you might say, well, why on earth do we need something like this? And I would just say, I think I think it can be a very fun thing for like a party to, um, you know, come up with something like this. It's, again, it's like Mad Libs, computer generated Mad Libs. And let's, let's read the last paragraph. Um, so in the end, there were no losers on the pickleball court that day, only legends united by their love of the game and the joy of competition. And as they gathered together for a post-match celebration, sharing laughter and stories long into the night, they knew that the spirit of pickleball would live on, transcending time and space to bring people together in the name of fun and friendship. It does always seem to put this really kind of treacly spin on things. <laughs> um, thoughts, thoughts on that? I see every, everyone's sticking around, so it seems like this is holding your interest. But um, yeah, any questions, thoughts? What do you, Nick? I'll just ask you since you are the um, AI skeptic. Um, what do you th does this story? Does it, does it seem benign? Does it disturb you? What What are your thoughts? Well, a couple of things going in different directions. I agree with you. It's a great party device. It's a lot of fun. It makes interesting and yet really sort of predictable connections, like with Helen Keller and Einstein. Uh, and I like your observation that many of these stories end on an upbeat note, kind of, uh, and they lived happily ever after kind of quality. Um, and I wonder if you wrote more stories, they would always end with a positive spin. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, um, let's, we could take that same, you can copy and paste the um, string you put into the chat engine. So we'll do, we'll put that back in. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, so write a story about a pickleball game that ends badly. Let's see what happens. And I had to hit the down arrow to get down to the bottom of this thing. Um, and maybe we should read about some of the other. I see David Crosby and John Lennon. It's it's much longer if you ask it to end badly. Yeah. Discordant scene. Go, you read it, Rodney. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just telling you, David Crosby and John Lennon provided musical accompaniment, their harmonies filling the air with a sense of camaraderie and unity. However, the melodies soon faltered as the game took a turn for the worse. In the moment of heated exchange, a disputed call sparked a heated argument among the players. Accusations flew, tempers flared, and before anyone could intervene, chaos erupted on the court. <laughs> Jerry Garcia and Elvis, once allies in music and sport, found themselves at odds, their friendly rivalry escalating into a bitter feud. Helen Keller, with her keen sense of touch, attempted to mediate, but her efforts were in vain as the chaos engulfed the court. So it doesn't go that well. I'll just cut to the chase. And as they dispersed, each lost in their own thoughts and regrets, they couldn't help but wonder if the true spirit of pickleball had been lost somewhere in the midst, amidst the chaos of competition. So I would say that the whole thing, the true spirit of pickleball, it's still trying to get back to a positive thing, right? 
Yes, I would agree. And of course, you prompted it to come up with a bad ending, something that doesn't end well. I wonder if there is a bias uh, built into the system to go towards the positive, sunny side of things. I think there is. Um, yeah, it usually. You, again, I want I, the big takeaway from this whole thing should be play with this stuff and see what you find out on your own. And it's kind of fun to think about that, like how people crafted this tool. Does the tool have the bot, you know, the bias you're talking about, Nick? I think that's a perfectly um, good way to use it. Um, I'm going to go back to the data set. Somebody asked me to share the data set. I'm happy to do that because um, it's all anonymous. So I think that's perfectly okay to do. Um, but let's look at some of these things that people asked about. Um, you know, things they would like to use AI to accomplish. So we talked about, let's go back. I'll show you real quick the, um, so write a message persuading someone not to vote for Donald Trump. Because I, I did, I, I thought this was what they came up with. If it's the same as what it showed me before, it was interesting. Um, it gives a, like a whole bunch of good reasons why a person would not vote for Trump. So um, under the leadership of Donald Trump, our com com country has become more divided than ever before, dot, dot, dot. Um, failure to address urgent issues like the COVID pandemic, erosion of democratic norms, um, international reputation, character and integrity. Like these are, these are pretty good um reasons and you could ask it to do the same thing write a message persuading people not to vote for for joe biden and it, I, I i think it would be even if you as like me i i that's what i want but it would be interesting to see what the arguments are because joe biden needs to prepare for that go ahead nick yeah i i bet a lot of people have seen these pictures of let's say a beauty queen face of hundreds of them superimposed on one another so that the features average out. Have, have many of you seen images like that? This reminds me of the way it averages out tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of statements that fall into the category of why not vote for Trump. So there's no understanding here. It's just spitting out. It's averaging and summarizing as fast as its little uh, silicone neurons can, can work. Um, that that's a good point. It, and it's totally true, Nick. It really, you know, like it's this is not going to be the eloquence of somebody, you know, Nicholas Kristoff in the New York Times. It's going to be this average. It's going to be like you could literally call it a mediocrity, but it's a jumping off point. Um, Bennett made a good suggestion. He says, um, why not see what it says if we put the message in, write a message. Let me get rid of that. Um, persuading someone to vote is uh, hopefully uh, it, it, this is going to be too distressing for people, but let's, I mean, you do need to know what the arguments are, right? So here are, here's what you would say to someone telling them to vote for Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. It, this it, is pretty it, predictable. Well, <laughs> it's predictable. But, you know, you, you, it might be useful with low information voters or something. So here's the question I would suggest, Rodney. Write an argument for why I should not leave my wife for 50 years. Or why I should. <laughs> okay, folks, this is, a, we're getting on like this. We'll see what it says. For staying with my wife of 50 years. Okay, let's just say, let's not let make it wife, okay? Let's make it husband. Okay. Uh, just because, um, I don't know, you know, millennia of patriarchy, I just feel like maybe we should do that. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, so this would be, um, yeah, why, um, okay. Staying with my husband of 50 years, maybe we'll make it leaving. Let's make wow. it because that's too that's too easy, right? It's all yeah. the, all the societal stuff. Mm 
Something that takes some emotional intelligence. Maybe I'm... It's the decision I have not made lightly. Well, it is undoubtedly a challenging. And I really hope no. I hope very few people get this message. You know, <laughs> I, think, I think that would if you left your marriage and you used an AI to generate the message you wrote. Boy, yeah, pretty like, sleazy. But here's the thing that strikes me, Rodney, and I bet a lot of other people. This is a summary of tens or hundreds of thousands of similar arguments and conversations and advice columns that have been scanned in order to generate it. It's an averaging of that that question. That it, it, you know, you're right, Nick. I think that I believe that's correct, and I think that's um, kind of fascinating, right? All right, folks, please don't do this. <laughs> uh, let's go. Let me go take a look at my PowerPoint. I had, I know I had some other examples. Um, I said I was going to do the Excel. Let's, I'll tell you what. Let's let's do the thing with the. Um, so where we're at, we're at eight o'clock. Let's go to the image generation because that is really um, fun. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, well, here I'm going to go to. Let's go back to my 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 PowerPoint slides because I have some some fun examples. All right, so give me a second here to share that. So I said before that um, I've used two image generation programs. I've used the Microsoft Bing Image Creator and I've used Firefly from Adobe which it's the same, going to be roughly the same sign up process for both of, for, for I think both of those, although I think the Microsoft, you may need to have a Microsoft license. And so here's some examples of things. You can do a lot of things with this, but um, birthday card images, and I've got some fun ones for you to look at. Um, you can create logos and you can just have weird fun. So we have um, on our street, there's a, a very nice young girl who loves hyenas. <laughs> and her birthday, it is true, her birthday is tomorrow. And I'm going to print this out and put this on a card and give it to her. And it's going to be a happy hyena birthday for Daphne. This is another one that's a little more cartoonish, I guess. And then I got a little crazy. So this is really kind of nuts. I, I think I said I um, peep, uh, hyenas on a tandem wishing Daphne a happy birthday. I don't know why it spelled her name wrong, by the way. It wasn't me. For some reason, the AI decided to spell her name wrong. Um, but, you know, what little girl wouldn't want to get this on a card, right? And then, um, and then this one, too, is really, really kind of cool. I love how Those the are great. Those are great. Like, like the fork. Or, or, or is it a lollipop? Something like that. So so that's like, you know, that kind of fun, right? Um, and then, you know, I got a little crazy. You know, you know, uh, everyone knows how I feel about the Los Angeles Dodgers. And I thought, well, what would happen to the Los Angeles Dodgers? They all ended up being lizards. Um, and this is them at, at Oracle Park as lizards. And then what would happen to the Giants were hyenas, right? And, um, you know, and then this is kind of the lizards against the hyenas. I like the fact that, the, you know, they are the giants. So, of course, they're much, much bigger than the Los Angeles lizards. And, um, you know, I, I think given the fact that the Dodgers have spent a billion dollars on two baseball players, um, you know, this is the alternative reality I may need to live in for the next wow. number of years. So, um so that's just all stuff that I did with the image generator and then a, just a little more fun, you know. And then this one, I love this one because, you know, when the Dodgers play the Giants, things tend to get out of hand. I love the guy with the bat kind of running around the bases and the hyenas and the, um, I don't know what happened to the lizards. Everyone's a hyena at this point. So, Rodney, what was your prompt for that last one? What did you put in? Well, let's go find it because it was, I think it was the Giants playing the Dodgers at Oracle Park. Um, let's find it. So I'm going to stop sharing that. And we're going to go into the 
image generator. Uh, and I use, like I said before, I use two image generators and I found, okay, that's, I found, I like the stuff the Microsoft one does better. But if we go, we, so these are past things that I created. This is, oh, I'm sorry. I am not sharing that with you guys. Hold on. <laughs> uh, pay no attention to the man behind that screen. Okay. Can you guys see this now? Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is, so one of the things the, um, the Bing Microsoft image generator does that's really cool is it keeps all of your past things and okay, so this is the one, if you guys read up here, this is the prompt I put in. Hyenas in San, uh, in San Francisco Giants uniforms playing baseball against lizards in Los Angeles Dodgers. I should probably put uniforms. I mean, I, that's what I got wrong. At Oracle Park. Wow. Although it seemed like to do what I wanted for some of them. And then, then you basically, you put the prompt in. It takes a little bit. It takes... Um, can take up to a minute to generate these things. And when you think about what it's doing, it's pretty, it's kind of extraordinary actually that it can do that so quickly. It's extremely extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, I, and this is the, I don't really know what's going on. Um, again, I get this sense of like giant players with bats, like maybe doing things that go beyond hitting balls with them. <laughs> it kind of looks, looks like the kind of mayhem that, um, uh, it seems like it's morphing the texture and the quality of hyenas and the faces with gestures and postures that you'd find in a baseball game. That's true. I think that's a good point. I wonder if it works something like that. Because these are gestures from baseball games, and there's your lizard. Well, there's um, sort of gestures. It, like something like this should never happen in a baseball game. By the way, it looks like the pitcher's <laughs> mound is out in the outfield. So I don't know. <laughs> maybe, um, maybe that's a conference on the mound. Yeah, but it wouldn't be from two different teams. So let's go to, let's kind of create a new one. Actually, I'll tell you what, somebody out there, um, put something into, put something into the Zoom chat that you would like to see an image of and, and, and think like outside of the box here folks give you guys a second for that and while you're doing that i'll show you yeah, here's like this is the one the prompt was world of artificial intelligence and that's how i got that this is the um the logo i used at the beginning of this program that, um, you know, create an image for a program called, and now for something completely robotic, Rodney's AI adventure. Those of you who didn't catch it at the beginning of the show, that is an AI generated title. It usually gives you, well, it does. It always gives you four different images to choose from. And when you tell it to put in text, it usually screws the text up. I have no idea. Hmm. Nobody, nobody has a suggestion for something. I put something in. You did in the chat. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I see it. Okay. So torrential rain. Thanks for that, Nick. Let's go to the creator. Put that in. You click create, and then you're going to be waiting for a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes it, it it takes a while, and it will give you some some things saying I'm still working on it. Oh, that's interesting. Unsafe image content. Detected so at least torrential rain washing away the White House as a wildfire rages in the background, but make it happy. It doesn't want to do that, Nick. Mm, interesting. Out. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it with Dodger Stadium. <laughs> you got to correct the Dodger, the spelling. Yeah, that's always you, one cannot spell correctly when one is being watched. So I think the White House is probably going to be what. Yeah, what maybe that's the flag. About. Elon Musk had nothing to do with this. <laughs> That's true. I uh, you know, you could, oh no, it doesn't like that either. Okay. Maybe the word rages is a trigger word. Burns is burn a less um, alarming word. 
Um, okay, we'll put in Burns. I think if you do enough of these, you you you'll come to their attention, and you can you can. But th th I think it's it's good that we actually did this. That we're seeing kind of the bound. There are boundaries, and you may run into them. In a, in a, but I I actually I think I can go. I have one, oh, and then you can see here it says prompt blocked. Like oh, it didn't like that either, Nick. <laughs> All right. I had. I had some pretty edgy things at one point. Like, you know, here's like a giant <laughs> snake with a bicycle. bicycle. Oh. A bicyclist riding into the mouth of an enormous snake in Oakland, California. It allowed that and it didn't allow a burning yeah. white house. What gives? I'm sorry, Nick. It doesn't <laughs> like the rain. Maybe because it's going to rain tomorrow and it's worried about that. Uh. Let me find some of the other. I think um, Sarah and Bennett have one so a stylized oak tree for the Calusa circle. This is this is very a very fitting um this is a perfect example of, of a real use because Sarah is creating a kiosk on the Calusa circle in um, Kensington. And she actually does need a logo for that. But I think it, it's gonna end up being a human created um logo. So hopefully we don't get in trouble for this one. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. So makes it look a little religious. I think that could be, this is publicly funded. That could be a problem. Um, we're a secular bunch here in Kensington. Um, that's cool because we have a tree in the middle of our circle. So that's kind of cool. In fact, they all have trees. Cruel. Cruel, yes. I don't know what that's about. Oh, Lusa, cruel. Yeah, it is curious that it has this spelling problem, given all the sophistication of the image making. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then let's, I know, Bennett, you have one. Um, a great wave, the great wave of Kanagawa landing in San Francisco. <laughs> that's nice. Wait, I gotta got to get the whole thing. The great wave. All right, so let me put that in. I hope you guys are having fun with this because that is the that is really the goal. Is um, you know when we play with toys, we learn stuff. That's why children do it, and that's I think that's what we should do with this. And, and Nick, you can like we can have parallel. Oh, well, look at that. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's kind of very cool, impressive. Right? That's better than the hyenas. It's, it's kind of weird that we have two Transamerica towers and stuff, you know. But um, I kind of oh, like. Oh, that's I great. Like, yeah, the fish, I like the fish jumping out of it. Yeah. It looks like it would be suitable for the Pan American mural kind of style, you know. Like Pan American Unity? Yeah. Now that we've lost that. Yeah, interesting. Nice. I, I, I'm, re I'm reading the John King book about the ferry building and, you know, it talks about how the three symbols of San Francisco are the Golden Gate Bridge, the Transamerica Pyramid, and in the ferry building, but this thing doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to have the ferry building in it, any of them. Yeah, but it has lots of pyramids. It does have lots of pyramids. It has like multiple. And then, um, yeah, so you can, you can go through them one at a time or you can see all four. Let me go back to this thing. You can see all four like that. That was a great no, no Sutro Tower. No Sutro Tower. So that's well, I don't I don't know if the Sutro Tower deserves to be a symbol or not. Um let's put that in there, see if we can get the Sutro Tower too. We'll try it. So I think you can have fun with this. I, you know, you could create some kind of logo with it. There are different ways to go with this. Well, now you get the Sutra Tower, at least only in that one though. Kind of interesting that it only gets it, gets it there. And it's kind of the Sutra wow. Tower, but there's like multiple Golden Gate Bridges now. Just 
Uh, nuts. And the light of oh, the mountain is really great, Mount Fuji. It's interesting to see where the failures are, where the logical fate, you know, like multiple Golden Gate bridges. It doesn't know that the Bay Area only has one Golden Gate bridge. Well, this is to me, this is all surrealism, you know. Um, yeah. It does kind of remind me, by the way, of an art topic, the Mirakami um, show at the Asian Art Museum, which is also wonderfully surreal. Um, I'm going to go back to chat, see if anyone else, a Buckeye tree planted next to the ferry building. Okay, let's try that. Um, I'll probably put in, oh, and this, I'll answer Sarah's question in a second. That's a good question. Let's put this thing in, um, make sure it knows that it's the ferry building in San Francisco. Hmm. And then see, Sarah's question is, can you feed it images to use? I believe this, um, this tool doesn't let you do that. I think there are tools that let you do that. They're kind of, they're, they're nervous about people doing stuff like that and taking actual images of people and um, doing AI stuff to them. There's a lot of, there's a lot of potential for that to go sideways or even worse. Um, wow, so these are more surrealism for sure. Mm -hmm. that's city hall that's that's not that's not the ferry building that's the ferry building although well that's actually yeah. the ferry building but ferry. who's ever seen buckeye trees like that those are no, it's well that's the size of watermelons yes it's this uh it's, who knows right uh well, <laughs> yeah, some really trippy images and um, I think there are, I, I think they, they get nervous about, um, I'm going to try John's, a rock band of famous artists and scientists. They get nervous about specific people. Um, although I think it may be possible to do that. And then we should probably take a look at the Adobe Firefly and maybe run some of these things in there and see what that comes up with. I, to me, the Adobe product isn't as good as as this one. Oh, well, look at that. Okay. So rock band with um, That's nice. famous artists and scientists. Do we know any of these people? Oh, <laughs> gosh, they've been so transformed. Is that Charles Darwin in the front? Um, I don't know any of those people. Sigmund Freud? It's it's a it's a wonder. Oh, and then um, was this is good because that other one was all white men. So good, we have a response to that. Um, and then more, the white men are back. These people look like actual rock and rollers here. You know, like I don't know, Frank Zappa maybe. Hmm. Wait, did I skip? Are but you're right. They, it is not picking up famous people. It's doing amalgams of uh, stereotypic famous faces. Yeah, I think I think that's right. It, it does. It's it's not. I think that's a boundary. Is it really tries to avoid using specific people? Although I'm not going to tell you definitively that that's a boundary. Way too many guitars. Good point, John. Right? Like, where are the drummers? Where are the? Uh, where's you know? Where's the um, singer or something, right? Um, I assume I assume some of them are. Let's take another look. Do we at least have a bass guitar in there? We well, we do, but it's like a five string. No, it's a four string bass. So we got bass and guitars, but no. I don't know. Could it be some kind of weird bluegrass band? Not sure. Um, I'm trying to remember. There were there's a, just a lot of things you can do with this. Um, to me, like the birthday card was one of the more useful ones I thought of. So, um, I could imagine doing things like, you know, it would be nice if you could take like, you know, there, like for the Bay Trail, there's places where we're hoping one day there will be bridges and could it take like a specific part of the Bay Trail and say, show us that with a bridge. I, that would be cool, but I don't, I don't know. Um, how about how about this? Let's do. Um, I got an idea. Um, um, show a bridge between Alameda 
in Oakland. And sorry, folks, but it's going to be a pedestrian bicycle bridge because I am me and that's what I like. So, so see if we can get this because there's actually um, there's a plan to one day build a bridge between Oakland and Alameda uh, that goes to downtown. <laughs> that's definitely not going to be what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. What do you think that's going to cost? <laughs> ask, ask, it, ask it how much it'll cost. Oh yeah. Well, well okay. Um, that let's put that. That's we're going to go back to Chat GPT for that. Um, I don't think it's going to answer this. Let's find out. Build a bicycle. Sorry, pedestrian. It's impossible to spell when people are watching you. Bridge between Alameda and I'm going to say downtown Oakland. That's what I really should have said in the first place. All right, so it's, first of all, it's hedging. It would vary depending on various factors. However, to give you a rough idea, pedestrian bridges, let's see, if we, we, get, we don't get actual numbers out of this, do we? It just tells you factors that can influence costs. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. To get, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to say. I think that's, it, it's a very long-winded way of saying, I'm not going to tell you. But, um, you know, kind of fun. Can it come, with a, come up with a safe bicycle route bypassing Hopkins Street businesses? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't think I can. I, I'd be surprised. Um, that, I'll tell you what, though. Let's, let's try that just because there's been a lot of controversy in Berkeley about this place, Hopkins Street, which is there was a plan to put a bike lane on that. And then there was a lot of... Um, uh, there was a lot of brouhaha about that. Um, what is a site? Where would you put, how about this? Where would you um, put a safe, safe bicycle route bypassing Hopkins Street businesses in Berkeley? I, I don't have high hopes for this, but let's let's try it anyway. There you go. It's coming up with specific recommendations. I, I think we'd have to look at them to figure out if they're actually, if they actually make sense. Um, Hopkins Street to Gilman Street. These are these are real places. Well, that's pretty interesting. It it is coming up with specific routes. Um, it's not the 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 route I had in mind wasn't any of these, but. Anyway, that's kind of interesting. Other other thought other thoughts. Um, let's just let's just like turn it open to anybody who wants to suggest um, either a Chat GPT or a. Oh wait, I, that's right. I was going to show you guys Adobe just so we can see. Um, let's pick something from something that we did. We'll pick the a buckeye tree planted next to the ferry building in San Francisco, and we'll put it. We'll throw it at, at the um, the Adobe image generator. See how they compare. So I'm going to click generate there. And I just I, I I mean my bias I'm a little I've been less impressed with things I've seen out of this um, Adobe thing. Yeah, so this is really well. It's a tree. It's like a real tree, right? But um, where's there's no ferry building to be seen. Doesn't seem to know what the ferry building is. It's much less cartoon like than the yeah. uh, Bling versions. That's true. Well, we said we wanted a Buckeye tree. That looks like a fig tree. Uh huh. 
So I don't know. <laughs> and it, it is realistic, whereas the other one was kind of fantasy. Well, land. Oh, and there's the ferry building. It's just like, it's across the water from the ferry building. That's kind of nuts. And we get more images too. Uh, let's pick a different one. So we'll go back to maybe the, the rock band one. And I hope, I just hope watching this, you guys get a sense of the things you can do. Because really the, the way to learn this stuff is to do it yourself. All right, so we're doing the ones with the rock band and of the scientists and artists. Oh, and that does remind me of another image thing I want to show you guys. Oh, well, again, it's, it's kind of more realistic. It, you know, the interesting thing is that Adobe is a very image-oriented uh, company, right? They've got all these tools for photographers and visual artists. So it kind of it's kind of interesting that these are much, these read much more like photographs. Yeah, it's a very different approach, Rodney, from Microsoft. So these feel like more like citations rather than uh, inventions. Tell, tell me more about that, Nick. Well, I mean, these feel like they're faces, composites, but they're lifted from real photographs as opposed to the Microsoft ones that feel like they are, they use some kind of cartoon generating uh, algorithms of shaping. And, you know, I, I thought the the uh, hyenas and the uh, baseball players was, was really quite beautiful in the way it combined those things. I don't know that, that uh, Adobe's could do such a nice job with that prompt. Yeah. The I think I had the hyenas. Let's let's go. Let's do the hyena. Well, um, let's do a hyena one because I don't think they were as good. But let's see. Um, a group of six hyenas wishing Daphne a happy birthday. Let's see what we get out of that. Oh yeah, that's right. That had the. It was a little more. It was a, yeah, very photorealistic, not cartoonish. Yeah, so maybe that's a, that's the argument for that. You know, different tools are going to be better for different things. Like this is going to be, this is kind of I don't know. I kind of like the crazy ones though myself. Mm -hmm. but, but maybe I don't know. I don't know which one Daphne. Which do you think Daphne would like better? These. She does love hyenas. Hmm. Maybe that's better. You know, this reminds me of the famous illustrations of a bunch of dogs sitting around a card table playing poker that we saw when we were kids. You've seen mm -hmm. paintings like that? I, it rings a bell. I, I don't, yeah. This is kind of, kind, of kind of It is kind of a form of surrealism, isn't it? Um, I'm going to go back. I want to show, there was one thing I wanted to show you guys that I thought was pretty cool that you can do. Um, maybe we'll go, I'm going to go to my Dodger giant crazy thing. And um, so we've got the hyenas playing against the Dodgers, um, but you can put in like, you can put it at the end of the thing in the style of and pick an artist. Um, so it could be like Edward Munch, right? And then it'll create, you can tell it do things in the style of um, a painter. You can also do that with writers too. We can go back to the chat GPT and you can have it write a story. So oh, this, look at that. this is kind of monk, huh? <laughs> well, again, what was the prompt for this one? Hyenas in San Francisco Giants uniforms playing baseball against lizards in Los Angeles Dodgers uniforms at Oracle Park in the style of Edward Munch. Wow, that's great. 
not that different from actually what actually happens when those two team plays two teams play. <laughs> pretty chaotic look at how the scale of the players is really off the size yeah. And then if we change it from Munch to um, oh, Leonardo, who Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, da Vinci. That's a great idea. We'll see what Leonardo da Vinci. I think it's going to take some time. Get all that sfumato. <laughs> and then it gives you, well, Okay, that really does that. It's just mm. crazy images. Okay, that's not that's not the best example. I guess you get better backgrounds or something. Uh, maybe you should do Pablo Picasso or something more distinct. Yeah. Or, or Mondrian. Mondrian, yeah. <laughs> Picasso. Let's try Picasso. That should that should get us hopefully get us something quite different. Oh, I and mean, we're getting, we're, we are at about an hour. And I'm, I don't want to take up much more of your time. I, 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 you know, I always do these things. First of all, I try to respect people's time. And second of all, I'd like to give you like something to do. And the thing to do is going to be to, um, to try doing this stuff yourself. Hopefully we've given you some ideas. I am going to, um, has it taken a while? It's really hung up on Picasso. Yeah, Picasso takes more time. That's okay. You'd think it'd take less time, you know, compared to Da Vinci. Well, he's got it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, well. Hmm. No. Not Picasso. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it really. I think it's it's like it's too. The, 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 it's too weird a subject. Like if you yeah. said, um, all right. It's like it only knows one song. But exactly. I think we can come up with something that'll be good, though. Um, I have a question, Rodney. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, they refused one or two of your suggestions. They didn't find it appropriate. Now, I'm asking myself how it's in the news right now. Did they make pornographic images of Taylor Swift? If they refused yours, they were political. <laughs> How can they do the other one? I, I thought I, they had rules. I'd be very surprised if this Microsoft image creator was used to do that. Uh, there, I think there are other image generator generation tools that don't have the, the same boundaries. They don't have as strong a boundary as, as Microsoft does. Hmm. So that, that would be my answer. Let's, let's go to, to one of these things that like, you guys gave me these famous people. So, um, so we'll say um, we're going to pick these two, you know, Rick Steves and Jenna Salk playing tennis in the style of Picasso. Let's see if we get something more Picasso like if we do that. What? What? <laughs> Maybe because they're real people. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Two men playing tennis in the style of Picasso. There's no way they can get upset about that. I don't think. But it, we, we you get the Picasso delay. Yeah, Picasso mm -hmm. takes time. Um, glad, glad people are enjoying the the. Um, this presentation. Denise asks if uh, if it misspells Daphne's name on the card, can you correct it? Yeah, if you are good with manipulating images, you could use things like um, PowerPoint. I would imagine I could do it. I've got I've got different ways of doing that. Yeah, Daphne's name isn't going to be misspelled on her card. I promise. All, All right. right. Oh. All okay, right. Now we're now we're getting somewhere. Wow. Oh. So that's kind of cool, right? That's good. Oh yeah. Very good. Woo. Wow, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Good. I would say this was the most successful one so far in yeah. terms of artistry. Let's change it to um, somebody else. Mondrian. Uh, no, I don't know if they know. Well, let's try Joan Brown. I love Joan Brown. If 
see if they can do this. Yeah, maybe, I thought, did you see your, her exhibit at the um, MoMA? Yeah. Yeah, wasn't that great? Well, I yeah. Did. I loved it. That I have a wonderful. catalog. I'm, yeah. You know, yeah. I, All those yeah. images were AI generated. <laughs> it was any, yeah, it was anything but. She couldn't paint her way out of a paper bag. Joan Brown? <laughs> it's all AI. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, Sarah said Botticelli. Botticelli. That Great. would be a good one. We'll do that. Yeah, so that that like really- uh, no, no, I don't know no, where they get that from. No. <laughs> Botticelli. Mm -mm, no. All right. Cross your fingers that we get something good out of this. And then I am going to move us toward the conclusion so that um, <laughs> back to your evening. But this has been, I, I was hoping this would be fun. And yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. And then I just, maybe we can even do like a part two or something and have you guys, you know, we can come together and see what people have come up with. I think it's fascinating. I think we should definitely do more of this. This is great. <clears throat> yeah, and ask like the questions Nick asked at the beginning, definitely ask those questions, but there's nothing to be gained by turning our back on this. All right. Oh. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. That's not bad at all. Kind of, right. I don't know. These <laughs> why are they not exactly Botticelli? I'm being picky. I mean, these are really sculpted bodies. Yeah. I like the airplane in the background. That's not bad at all. <laughs> the background. <Ooh. laughs> that's Nick, that is not an airplane. That's a drone. Come on. <laughs> a 17th century drone. I love it. Uh, no, okay. much earlier, what? Botticelli was not 17th, what, 16th century? 15th, <laughs> right? 15th. 15th. The uh, 15th. Oh, yeah. Wow. The Spanish Inquisition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be the 15th century. Doing all that. So, so let me um let me stop sharing this thing and it just so that was the end of our artificial intelligence discussion. Uh, if you want more information, please send me an email and I can send you uh, links to some of the things we discussed. Thanks for watching our video.